Onam is the biggest and most important festival in the state of Kerala. It is a harvest festival and celebrated with joy and enthusiasm all over the state by people of all communities. According to a popular legend, the festival is celebrated to welcome King Mahabali, whose spirit is said to visit Kerala at the time of Onam. This is a time that people dress in their new clothes and all their finery, much like the world. Hence the title of the book, Onam in a Nighty, struck me as a bit paradoxical and it piqued my interest. Yes, the nighty is not a night dress in this country. Oh yes. It is a cultural icon. It is worn through the day and has hence become timeless. Yeah, you know, a nighty can be worn to buy vegetables. Some women, you know, drape a dupatta for modesty. You can queue for a buffet breakfast in a nighty. It can be worn while dropping the kids off at school, while taking a dip in a holy river, and believe it or not, while giving television interviews. What? <laughs> the nighty, despite its name today, is all day wear. So now imagine Onam in a night. The book is written by Anjana Menon, a columnist who shuttles between Delhi and London. She is the co-author of a book called What's Your Story? The Essential Business Storytelling Handbook. The author works in Delhi and the book is more like a travelogue, spotlighting Trishul, the city in which she was quarantined in her parents' home during the peak of COVID-19. The book has her showcasing God's own country with a great sense of almost chauvinistic pride. That's almost? <laughs> I thought there was a great deal of chauvinistic pride out there. Okay. But moving on, the book is a chronicle of hand-picked events, people and life in Trishul. The book begins as a fun, sassy read full of promise where she paints evocative word portraits of the town, the atmosphere and the characters in her stories. The book is written in a simple language with rare humor and a lot of tongue-in-cheek expressions. For instance, she beams at me standing in Kerala's other national dress, the nighty. For those hailing from Kerala, the book can be sheer nostalgia, an authentic peek into a slice of Kerala's life. Radhika, being married to a Keralite, you would be very familiar with a lot of the nuances about this life in Kerala, you know. However, even for a non-Keralite like me, it made for a diverting and very interesting read. It sure is. However, like NRIs, you can see no wrong and always carry this romanticized image of India in their minds. Anjana is an NRT or non-resident Keralite. <laughs> Hence, her depiction of Kerala too is often romanticized. In the beginning, we have a protagonist who finds the quarantine extremely irksome. Here, the author echoes the sentiments of millions of Indians during the lockdown. Time seems to move as slowly as Trekker, you know, and distractions are few and far between. And hence, the author starts to actually look forward to her call from the health officer and the daily visit of the local policeman, although from afar. Yeah. Mena's writing is controlled and precise. She has a way with words that express sentiments, feelings and thoughts in a very succinct and concise manner without ever losing out on the humour of things. I thought the humour was one of the strong points of the book. The counterpoint reference to Trisur is Delhi NCR, her home. Trisur beats Delhi NCR hands down on multiple counts, yet the author has no rational explanation of why she chose to leave her idyllic hometown for the rough and tumble and even sometimes dangerous environments of Delhi. All of the night is a view of life in Kerala through rose tinted glasses, right? Yes, but despite spending a lot of time, you know, painting Kerala out to be God's own country as it's called, to be fair to Menon, she does highlight some of the idiosyncrasies of the state too, you know, the maddening traffic, the underlying misogyny, the attitude towards migrants, etc. This is all touched upon. The book, however, leaves a lot to be desired. The journal or diary style pieces together a milieu of incidents in the manner of a patchwork quilt. The mundane and the extraordinary happenings in the life of a community seemingly at peace with itself. Yeah, and while she waxes eloquent about, you know, Payasam and the Puram festival, there is no mention of people who lost their family members and friends and jobs due to COVID-19. There's just a passing mention of the migrant population in Kerala, which is growing in numbers, and how migrants may have assimilated themselves so well into the Kerala life that is so different from their own. Yeah. It is actually, you know, Kerala stands the pop marks. There's also an acknowledgement of the role of Middle Eastern remittances in the prosperity of the native population and its impact on the social fabric. Radhika, if you pick this book up in the mind for a light, beautifully expressive and at times uproariously funny read, then Onam in a Nighty hits the spot. 
But if you're looking for something which uh, kind of sheds light on Kerala's social, economic, or political fabric, then the book just about whets the appetite. To get a deeper understanding of this, uh, would require a different book or probably a set of books. But you know, one thing that shines through the entire book is Menon's love for Kerala, and it's so transparent, and she expresses it so beautifully. Hmm. Take for example this, you know, little piece that I'll read out. A Kerala commonality overtakes everything in the state, including religion. You will see the same brass lamp in churches that you will see in temples. You will see mosques with clay tile roofs and wooden architecture and white lime walls. The mosque in Kotia, believed to be centuries old, is a testament more to Kerala architecture than Islamic influences. Yes, there can be no doubt that the author has a flair for storytelling. Sarcasm is a potent means of self-expression for men. In her journal, she touches on things that are extraordinarily ordinary and more important issues such as the environment, etc., but only fleetingly. To me, Onam in the 90s is a bit like watching a photograph of an Onam Sarkar. You can see what's available, but you can't taste it. However, it's a deeply personal experience of the author and should be accepted as such. I would give the book three stars. Okay. The setting is actually in a very contemporary India as well with mentions of Instagram and organic foods and fads and what have you. I thought the illustrations that got the book to me were, you know, quite distracting. Overall, agreeing with Radhi, I would give the book three stars too. As I said, a nice, light and precise read with language that one does not come across often nowadays. To truly understand Menon's sentiments, I would recommend watching the Kerala song by Kerala Tourism on YouTube. It sort of sums up love for, as Indians famously say, the native place. The link is in the description box below. For once, I thought Yas had given his musical reference a pass, but no such luck. So here's Radhi and Yas from Booklook signing out. If you like our reviews, do like and subscribe to our channel and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I could have sung the Kerala song. Think about Thank that. God. Next week on Booknook Shorts, I'll be talking about the Western bounty hunter Jess Williams, who's the creation of an author called Robert J. Thomas, who has now been featured in more than 100 books, all of which I've read. Wow. For lovers of Westerns, it's a must-read series. See you next week. Bye. Bye.